Hi everyone, we are moving on with the next video for the next topic for uh, for Matt's last theorem, which is the basics of elliptic curves. This topic ended up being very long, so I decided to split it up into three uh, different, three smaller videos. So the first video, this, this one, is going to be elliptic curves over real numbers, uh, as well as the group law uh, for elliptic curves. Um, and that's the general the general uh, uh, group law for any any smooth elliptic curve. So the group law is probably the most important thing about elliptic curves. It's what I think is going to be uh, it's what we're going to be looking at as we move forward with. Um, proving for Matt's last theorem. Um, so then part two will be elliptic curves elliptic curves over rational numbers. Uh, in particular, again, the uh, group law uh, for rational numbers. Um, and then part three is elliptic curves over complex numbers, which uh, is where I think we get the connection to modular forms, because modular forms are all about complex numbers, and elliptic curves are uh, can be seen as a, um, uh, I think, as an isomorphism to an embedding of a torus in complex numbers. So that somehow gets us to uh, modular forms. It's that combined with the, the group structure is what makes this all work, I think. So part one is elliptic curves are real numbers and the general group law for, for any elliptic curve. But elliptic curves themselves, as you think about them, are just real numbers or, or just graphs on the, on the Cartesian plane, just the xy plane. Uh, so the first thing is... Um, just over the real numbers, we've looked at this before, but the, the uh, standard um, equation for an elliptic curve is uh, x cubed plus ax plus b. Uh, and the definition is it is a elliptic curves are plain, non singular. algebraic curves. So plane just means it's on the xy plane. Non-singular means basically that it's smooth. It's not, uh, there are no cusps and no places where it crosses itself. And then algebraic means that it's a polynomial in two variables. So that's what this is. There's a y variable and the uh, x variable. That makes it algebraic and then curve. Um, so, okay, so over real numbers, uh, I just wanted to give us a sense of what they are. So we have the equation here. Um, interestingly, uh, so elliptic curves can have one of two forms, which I also showed you in the last, uh, the last video, I think. They either look like this, or they look like this, where this sort of... Uh, meets. And what determines which of those it looks like is there's actually a discriminant for the elliptic curves. It's minus 16, 4a cubed plus 27b squared. So if this is positive, then the elliptic curve is going to have two pieces. If this is negative, it's going to have one piece. And if this is zero, then it will cross somewhere and it's actually not an elliptic curve because it's going to end up looking something like this, which means that, that we can't use that one. So I thought it would be interesting here just to play with the graph a little bit so you can see what's going on. Um, so let me just type in y squared equals x cubed minus x. That's one and y squared equals x q 
cubed minus x uh, plus 1, and it looks the other way. So you can see, uh, just by adding 1 to this, it changes it from, from positive to negative. Uh, it's also, so let's put in the, um, the standard form. Um, make sliders. Uh, and then also put in the um, determinant or the discriminant plus 27b2. So here we go. So for here, the one that we were just looking at had a negative one here. Oh, let me uh, fix this so they're not, so they're uh, integers. And minus five, five, one. So the first graph, we, the first uh, one we looked at was a is minus one um, and b was zero. And you can see with that, uh, the discriminant is positive. It's 64 and that gives us the two. Uh, and then if we add one to b, then that makes it uh, one piece, okay? So let's also see if we can figure out, first of all, if... Uh, a and B are both, I don't know why those are, if A and B are both zero, then this will be zero. And that is going to make one with a cusp. This just is a, comes to a point and then goes down. So this is not an elliptic curve. Uh, and then what else can we do here? It's interesting, so here's a uh, cubic and this is a square, right? 27 is a cubic, four is a square. So if we make, a minus three, and we make B plus two or minus two, then bingo, it crossed. So this one does not count. So what do we have here? We have four, you can see it, it equals zero, but it's minus three, this is minus 27 times four plus 27 times four, that's gonna equal zero. Uh, and what was the other one? Oh, so let's see if it's minus two. How did, what's that gonna look like? Is that right? That looks like it should be okay. So, um, okay, so there we go. And then one more thing that I think is interesting to do is just to look at how, if you change A and B, how it changes the, uh, the numbers or how it changes the graphs. And it looks like if it gets too big, it doesn't do very much. But if we keep it up here, then here, when, when A is one, it still doesn't make much. But if A is zero, then it gets more square. Then when A is negative, it uh, starts to have more of a curve. And then uh, we'll be able to see. This kind of looks like, um, it looks like uh, elevation lines to me, right? Like we're going, closer and farther from a, from a mountaintop. And then eventually it disappears. Okay, that's enough of that. So that's what, that's what elliptic curves look like in uh, real numbers. Okay, the last thing I wanna do for this video is define the group law for smooth elliptic curves. First, the group law is, uh, it's interesting. They just basically uh, define a, a addition for these um, curves. So I have, um, in order to look at this, there are two things that we're going to need to know. And I don't know whether uh, the viewers, the audience will know this stuff or not. So the first is what abstract groups are. And the second is the projective plane. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to explain it in this video, but I'm going to make two side videos. Uh, one that'll explain groups and one that will explain the projective plane. So you can watch those if you need to. With, algebra, with abstract algebra, once we get started with the actual uh, really looking into elliptic curves, I think we're gonna have to start by going into more detail about abstract algebra anyway, so we will get it. But anyway, for now, I'm just assuming you know what a group is and what a, a, the projective plane is and homogeneous coordinates. If you don't, watch the other two videos that I'll post soon. So. What we're trying to do here is make a uh, a group operation on um, on elliptic curves. So if we have two points, say P and Q, 
First thing to know is that um, because y is squared, because y is squared, this uh, the graph is symmetric over the uh, x-axis. So if there's any point here has a, an, uh, has a point opposite also. Um, so if we draw a line through these two points, we'll hit another point r. And as I just said, that point's going to have an opposite minus r. So we define the operation of addition as p plus q equals minus r. So we cross the uh, curve in a third spot, go down to the, uh, the opposite side, and that's, our, uh, that's the addition. So that, uh, oh, so that's the basics of what P plus, of what P plus Q is. Now, the problem is there are some, that's not always going to work. There are some spots where that won't work. And the first thing is the reason um, that I'm, that we have to mention the projective plane is we're looking at uh, these curves on the projective plane, which means that we're adding uh, a point at infinity, um, above the y-axis. And that is going to be our, uh, our identity. So if we have p plus 0, or plus the point O, it's just going to equal p. And if we have, uh, oh, and that also equals O plus p. So if you take, if you take a point and you draw a line through infinity, that's basically a vertical line. So you're going to end up at uh, minus P, which is the same thing. Or uh, it's O, and then that also equals minus O. Minus O is the same same thing. So, so there's an identity. What is the... Uh, the next thing is that um, because each point has its opposite, if you... Then we also have... We also have inverses, so p plus minus p equals o. You can see that easily as well. So if we have a point p, then minus p is here. And again, it's just a reflection. That means that this is a vertical line. So it's going up through infinity. So that's the that's the minus, um, or that's the that's the identity element. Okay. So we just need to look through. Um, the sort of uh, the degenerate cases where things go a little bit wrong. What if uh, this works fine if P and Q are different, but if P and Q are the same, then we have to do something a little different. So if we have P and Q are both right here, then what we do is we take the tangent line at that point and we'll still hit at some place r and then go down to negative r. You can see that that makes sense because if q, if you imagine, this is point p, if you imagine that q is here, the line's gonna be this way and then as q slowly approaches p, it's gonna end up at the tangent line. This is just what we learned in, in basic calculus. So the, the tangent line would be when p equals q. And uh, when p equals q, it's just the same as uh, 2p. You just take the tangent line and uh, you end up at minus r. Now, there's still a problem even with that because there are inflection points in this graph. So if p is right here, the inflection point is where, you know, the curve is going this way and then here it starts going that way. There's a point where it switches direction. If P is right here, then the tangent actually is not going to hit the, uh, the line anywhere else. So in that case, if it happens to be on an inflection point, then we just say that uh, P, equals, um, P equals minus P. And uh, so it's basically, it's, it's, or so, so R is, um, R is minus P. So it's just basically the opposite. Uh, so if it's an inflection point, then P plus P, uh, equals minus P. Okay. Uh,
In other words, 2p is, is the opposite. Okay, so, um, okay, so that's everything we need to know that there's a group. There's an identity, there are inverses, there's an associative law I think is, is kind of obvious, and then, uh, but for now we'll trust that, that we have that anyway. This is how to define it. So this is all over real numbers. Okay, that is it for part one, elliptic curves over real numbers, uh, and the group law for elliptic curves, for general elliptic curves. So part two will be elliptic curves over rational numbers and proving the group law that when you add two uh, rational points together, you get another rational number. And then part three will be elliptic curves over complex numbers. And then we'll move on to modular forms. Okay, here is the link to the first video in this chapter. Here is the link to the previous video. Here is the link to the next video. And click here to subscribe. And please join me on Patreon. The link to that is below in the description. Thank you.